This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, he said that it's a huge risk to say Torah. And I said it many times because I feel that risk many times before I come to say Torah. But I know that there is no other way except of <clears throat> being like that righteous man, Nachshon ben Aminadav. Nachshon ben Aminadav was that person that when Am Israel were standing in front of the Red Sea and the Egyptians ran after them to revenge and to kill them and all the people, all the public were standing over there, didn't know what to do, there was no solution, couldn't go back to Egypt, they will be killed, couldn't right, run to the right, couldn't run to the left, the desert was closing on them from both sides and in front of them there was the sea and like you know the sea is not the best solution also for a few million people women children men that probably never learned how to swim as well what are they gonna do and Nachshon ben Aminadav suddenly got that crazy idea and he's jumping with his sneakers to the water like holding his iPhone above his head and getting into the to the ocean, to the to the Red Sea, and like crazy, it's crazy. It's it's an it's a, it's it's an act of craziness. Like in the eyes of of people that are looking, like everyone are stuck. Everyone don't know what to do, but we just came to that situation that we don't know what to do because the sea is not a solution. Like. What are you doing? It's uh, like to run into the sea. It's like those people that ran to the electric fences. Like it, like the fence is not the solution. The sea is not the solution. But he's going there. Why? Based on what? There was no commandment. And this person felt like that's the way to do it something in his mind told him that's the way and he'd been praised for it and the redemption took place by his merit that he was crazy enough to do something that other people couldn't think of even that man of truth Moses was standing on the on the mountain and praying to Hashem and calling Hashem and Hashem rebuked Moses and Hashem told Moses why are you calling me right now Tell Ben Israel, tell the children to walk, to go into the sea. Now, me, I'm standing in the same position. Why? Because I see people that are choosing religion every day. On daily basis, they choose to be religious every day. In the mornings, they're waking up and they're putting tefillin. And they wash their hands with a cup, and they're learning halachot, and they're keeping Torah, learning Torah. Take. But when I am checking things deeper, I see that it's not a solution. <laughs> like, you don't have to follow me. Like, I didn't force you to come to my classes, and it's okay for me. I'm not getting insulted if people are coming, walking in the middle of the class. Like, I'm, I'm able to deal with that. Many of my most closest friends in life, they, they walked away from me in, the, in like, while we were walking together, like, I'll understand. But you tell me, like, okay, you're keeping Shabbat, you're eating kosher, you're holding a Siddur every morning, you're saying Birkot Torah, Birkot HaShachar. Okay, so that's a solution? You're happy now? Tell me I'm happy, I leave you alone. I'll walk in the middle of my class, I don't mind. Like, if I'm wrong, Fix me. I'm willing to learn. Now I'm not saying that it's not the right way to be observant, but I'm saying that it's not the solution for what we for what we need. Like, okay, we are Jewish. Okay, like we're stuck with that. We're Jewish. Like you are commanded. Hashem commanded us on Mount Sinai. Hashem revealed Himself. He said 
Hey guys, you are keeping Shabbat. Okay, nothing to do. There's nothing to do. We're happy to. We need to eat kosher. We're happy. Not like you want to go now and eat shrimps and pork. We're Jewish. We're eating kosher. It's okay. There's no problem with being observant, with keeping Shabbat, eating kosher. But I'm asking you, is it the solution to your problems? Are you now lack of problems because you're observant? Now, you went to the mikveh, you put your tefillin, Rashi and Rabbeinu Tam, you learned seven pages of Gemara, three pages of Shulchan Aruch with all the, the, the righteous ones that wrote the explanations, all the, the mefarshim on the page, and you woke up in before of, of the sunrise, in dawn, and you prayed, and you... I had months that I would wake up before dawn, in the middle of the night, night Saying Tikkun Chatzot, walking by foot, doing it Bodedut to the Western Wall, to the Kotel Amaravi, dipping in the Mikveh, in the, in the Rova Yudi, in the Jewish, how you say Rova? Quarter? Quarter. 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 Over there. And praying net, Shmona Esre, long Shmona Esre. And I had even like almost a month that every day I would go and praying with the Minyan of Mikubalim in those tunnels under the, under the, the, the wall, in front of Kodesh HaKodeshim, like fantastic prayers, Shacharit over there, almost every morning for a long time. And, 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 and like, in reality, it, I don't know, like if it helped me, it didn't help me, like I'm happy I did it. It was amazing, like it was fantastic experience, but to say that in the noontime or in the evenings I wouldn't fight with my wife, she wouldn't scream at me, we wouldn't have issues with our um, financials, with money. Like, we haven't reached heaven because I was davening nets, because I was praying early in the morning. We haven't reached heaven because that I went to the mikveh and washed my like, it didn't. Now, I'm not saying don't do it. You should. We, me, for sure, I'm doing it. Like, for sure, I'm not telling you not to. But something is missing here. Because here we can see that we're huge amount of people that are being observant and we're not happy. We're not happy. We're not complete. We haven't achieved what the, the Torah is claiming and telling us that is available for those ones that will keep it. So, or that Hashem is not keeping His word. And we don't want to say that, right? We don't want to say that Hashem is not keeping His promise. So something that we're doing is wrong. But we are waking up in the mornings and we are putting tefillin and we are keeping Shabbat and we are eating kosher. So what do we miss? What do we miss? We miss some, some connection. We miss some spiritual connection to the truth, to Hashem. Because else we would feel the power, we would feel the energy. The energy, the passion from the tefillin, the, the excitement from keeping Shabbat. Like you're walking like that with your head down to the synagogue, to the shul. You're broken going to the mikveh and coming out from the mikveh like, okay, like, okay, now I'll take a shower. And it like, you don't feel the excitement and then you're judging yourself and hating yourself or not being holy and not feeling anything in the mikveh, not feeling anything from the prayer, but maybe it's not you to blame. Maybe something is missing, maybe something is wrong, maybe something is bent, maybe there is something that we can fix, and maybe we should finally put our finger on that thing. Now the answer for that thing is that we miss that crazy person that will tell us that we need to go into the ocean and that a miracle will happen to us. That's what we miss. And this is why everyone, like lunatics, are walking in the streets and waiting for Mashiach. Because Mashiach, he will be that person that will hold a different spirit inside of him. Something will be different in that person. Now that's where I'm finding myself in that problem. Why? Because I know exactly what to say. But in reality, me, myself, I'm scared to go into the water. Like I can say, we need to go to the water. But to tell you, hey, I'm taking you into the ocean, I'm not able to, I'm me, myself, I'm scared. Like I don't believe that if I am going now to the ocean, the sea will open to 2 or to 12 like it did. I'm, I'm, I'm being honest with you. I know that that's what we need to do. 
but I don't have the guts to do it. That's in reality. Like, I'm not, I'm not gonna fool you. I'm not Mashiach, I'm not a, no, listen, we, no. If I was able to cross the sea, trust me, I would do that. Or like yesterday I was on the beach, I could go. It was no problem. If I really would want to test it, to like, I would do it. But I'm too scared. My, my, my own trust in Hashem is lack of that craziness, of that understanding that really in reality there is no nature. Me, myself, I'm not getting it. And that's why it's dangerous to say Torah. Because if you claim that you know something and you don't really know that thing, you don't really understand what you're talking about, so you're lying. And that's why I'm very careful to, to admit and to say the truth. Now, the real truth is that we must understand that something is missing in the way that we're serving Hashem. And this is the spiritual connection. Now, as long as we understand that we're lack of that powerful tool of complete faith, not complete faith like that there are people that are claiming that they do have that complete faith, but in reality also not able to go and cross the sea. Because we saw many huge righteous people and they were not able to cross the sea. Even though that they claim to have complete faith. So we're not talking about just claiming to have complete faith. We're talking about really to have that solid faith. And also that unique spirit that will give you the, the, the motivation to try it. To go for it. And to risk everything. With no fear in your eyes. Now, like I said before. Me, about myself, I can tell you the truth. I'm not ready. I'm not, I don't know, like maybe in a minute from now I will, but for now, as for now, put the sea in front of me, on me, I'm not crossing, I'm too scared, I'm not able to make that step, like, it's new shoes, like, <laughs> don't want to ruin my shoes. So in reality, I am not able to do that thing, but what am I doing? I'm strengthening myself, I'm working on myself. I don't let myself fall to the sadness and despair of those ones that realize that they're not able to do it. I'm working on myself to be able to find the power and what is giving me the most power of all the advice that I ever tried in my Avodat Hashem while trying to serve Hashem. When you wake up early in the morning, it gives you a drop of happiness, something good, you feel some inspiration. When you go to the mikveh, when you do long in bodhidut, there are things when you give charity, that when you do it, you feel good, like you feel mm, mm, some kind of, of inspiration, a feedback from Hashem, something that is, is uh, like wind in the back that is pushing you to continue. But what is the most powerful thing, for me at least, in my journey, that is giving me the most power to continue and to work on myself more when I'm reaching out to more people, to more holy souls and waking them up. When I see that more people are gathering and we are now holding hands together and I'm not alone in that journey, it gives me the most strength and power to know that our way is promised. And it's written also that even if we are united as one unit, as one person, as one soul, even if we're wrong in our mindset, means we're not thinking clear, we're not thinking right, the Creator will stand by our side because of our unity. So the fact that group of people are trying to walk and to work together to achieve something good, at least something good, we're trying. Maybe we're not the most righteous, maybe our mind is not the clearest ones of them all, but we are trying to do something good with our lives. And the fact that we are doing it together is giving me a lot of power and energy to know that Hashem likes our move, that Hashem wants our work, our effort. Now I'll tell you something, and this is a very deep thing. It's a very, very, very deep thing. And put your mind to it and understand what we're talking about. This is the secret for the redemption. This is the secret for Shlom Bayit. This is the secret for a person to have complete faith. And me, your friend, I'm not holding that level. Now I 
yesterday told my wife that when I came to that realization, to that understanding, the first thing that happened to me, soon I'll explain to you what I'm talking about. When I came to that understanding, first thing that happened to me that hit me in the face was how far I am from it. Whoa, like heaven from earth. No connection. I am here and it's over there and like, whoa, the distance. It's like terrifying. How am I going to make it? How am I going to fill that gap? It's crazy. But then, after one minute of thinking about that thing and not being scared from that terrifying thought of how far and weak I am, I realized that even the fact that that thought hit me in the face is a sign it's still a sign that I am understanding something about it and I am learning even from my mistakes. Even by recognizing the distance of mine from the goal, from the purpose that soon we will talk and discuss what it's all about, even the fact that I am realizing I understand how far I am from it, it's already a proof for the fact that I'm on the road. That at least I'm on my way to that place or else I wouldn't even think about it. Today you live in the US and you're dreaming about the holy city of Jerusalem. Great, fantastic. So you're not there yet. But at least you are aware to the fact that there is that holy mountain that calls Jerusalem. Harabai. You know in your heart there is a point of holiness that at least works on that thing that one day that snowball will be strong enough, big enough to make its work, to push you from one land to the other, from one place in the universe to the next, and then you will climb, but at least you're building yourself, at least you're rolling somewhere. So, that understanding that I had yesterday is very deep, and like I told you, it's the secret of redemption, it's the secret of how we received the Torah, and were able to see the face of Hashem on Mount Sinai, and it's a secret of Shalom Bayit. How really to have complete faith and to have peace in your house. All the separation that we feel, the distance that we feel from each other, is coming to us because of the separation of the bodies. Our bodies are separating from, for, separated from each other. But our souls are united in their roots. Great, fantastic, nice saying. What's the problem? The problem is that we are still not connected in our mind to our souls. And this is why we cannot feel our friends. When your wife, when your friend, when a certain person that your soul's supposed to be connected means that you have one soul Let's say that you now, someone is, 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 is stabbing, pinching your finger. So you will feel that pain in the rest of your body. The energy, the pain will, will be channeled in the nerve system all over your body. Your other arm can jump, your leg can jump, you can, all your body can react because that you are connected to your finger even that that finger, in a way, is separated from the rest of your fingers and from the rest of your organs, it's a different ang eh, organ. It's separated, but it's connected enough that you will feel it. Here you feel it. Someone is threatening on your finger, you will walk away. All your body will walk. You don't want to lose that finger, right? So you will back off. All your body will help you to back off. But spiritually, when someone is threatening your friend, you're not backing off. You're not aware to that. Your best friend can sit in the same house with you and to be so sad and depressed and broken and you won't feel him. So it means that you're not even connected to him in a breath of a hair, in a thread. Nothing. You are disconnected from him completely. Why? Because you cannot feel his feelings. If you, if we, if I, would be connected to the rest of the souls, really connected to them, when someone would be sad, I would feel sadness. And if someone would be happy, I would be happy. 
now that all of what that I just said about the separation of our souls and that the fact that we cannot feel is an evidence for our spiritual separation that's not true because our souls are connected and we know that our souls are connected the problem is that we are not connected in our mind to our souls when your friend is in sorrow his soul feels that sorrow that pain and that pain is going deep into the rest of the souls and all the souls experience the same sorrow and it's the same about happiness but what is happening our awareness is asleep we can't feel the spiritual sorrow that our souls experience and we're not aware to it not because that we don't feel it because that there is a separation between our hearts to our minds between our souls to our awareness like that you go to the dentist you go to a doctor and he gives you that drug uh, 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 novocaine that you won't feel the pain now in that time that he is treating you that he's helping you your body feels the pain only the nerve system only your mind cannot feel it but the body reacts to the pain it's not that the body doesn't hurt the body hurt just you can feel the pain so the problem is not that we are disconnected from each other we're not we're 100 percent connected to each other the problem is that we're asleep that's the problem and how you wake up yourself it's your job to want to be awake it's our job to wake ourselves up all of the time to remind ourselves our souls connected I'm going to ask you, did it happen to you once that you woke up in the morning and you were so sad and you didn't know why? Did it happen to you that you woke up one day and you were so happy and you couldn't put your finger on the reason? Does it happen to you once in a while that suddenly you're in a different mood? You're so bothered, something is taking your mind from one thing to the next. Always you're blaming yourself. Always you're calling yourself in names. One day you're crazy, one day you're not connected, one day you're this, one day you're that. All day long you're talking bad things about yourself. Okay, but in reality, do you really know why you were happy or why you were sad? Or why now you're happy or why now you're sad? Do you know about that, about yourself, the real reasons? No, you don't. Why you don't? Because your awareness, your mind is disconnected from the real reason of the nature of your soul of what goes on in your soul but the fact that your soul is experiencing those changes is the evidence for the fact that your soul is connected to other souls because the positive soul that is a separated unit and goes in a positive way should always be happy and a depressed and broken soul, so to speak, that is separated from the rest, can be only going in one way and it's down. Can go only down because it's the nature of that soul, let's say. It's going down, it's going up, it's going right, it's going left. But in reality, it's not the status of your soul. Your soul is experiencing changes all the time. And those changes are coming because of the inner and deeper connections of your soul to other souls. And our souls are connected. And when we are keeping one mitzvah, when we're doing one good thing, we are influencing and moving and refreshing and waking up the rest of the souls like a branch of the tree. That when you shake one branch, all the tree moves in a way. And if you'll shake it enough, all the tree will, will move completely. You'll see the movement in all the leaves, in all the branches. The roots will move a little bit even. You can shake your ancestors that are already buried in ground. If you will move yourself, if you will wake yourself, shake yourself up enough, 
you will see that your movement will wake up the souls that went to sleep long time ago. And you're going to wake them up. And you're going to call them to the purpose of our being. And for that we need to wake up ourselves. Because you're not able to go and reach out to another branch to wake up another person. If I will go now and knock on the door of a person and will tell him, Hey, you need to do this, you need to do that. He won't listen to me. Only after I will work on myself to be honest and pure, or at least to put a lot of effort on certain things, only after working on myself, I will have the ability and the power to go and to talk about that thing with others. As long as you are empty and lacking in that thing, you cannot go and wake up others. No one will listen to you. Only words that are coming out of the heart are getting into the heart of the one that accepts them, that listens to them. So the first step is to work on ourselves. And how you work on yourself? What should we do? Like we said, I'm waking up in the mornings, I'm going to the mikveh, I'm going to the synagogue, I'm putting my tefillin, I'm covering my head, I'm wearing my dress, I'm doing what like everyone are doing and doing and doing. And where's the answer? The answer is that we need to connect our mind to our hearts, that we need to connect our awareness to our souls because our awareness is asleep. We don't understand that when Nachshon ben Aminadab, when one person is choosing to go into the depths of the sea, the Creator will open the sea not just for him. The Creator will open the sea for the rest of the nation, even if they are standing on the shore keeping their sneakers dry. Why? Because they are one unit. And when he jumped into the water, he did it for them. And when his soul woke itself up, he moved the branches that will move the rest of the branches and everyone awaking up from his act. And that's the place that I'm standing in. That I'm realizing that even though that I'm asleep, I need to throw myself into the water. I don't have a choice. Because I see that people are sleeping even deeper than I. And I don't know how it can be. Like, I'm sleeping until 11 every morning, Lao. How can you sleep even later than that? Are you crazy? What's going on with you guys? Yesterday night, I had a dream that I ate a huge marshmallow. And I woke up in the morning and I couldn't find my pillow. <laughs> I was sleeping so deep. In reality, we have a potential of waking ourselves up. We have that power. It's in our power to come back to who we really are. Because we are those souls. And we must wake up ourselves and then to go and to electrify, to move everyone else with our message. With the message that will appear and will come to our mind when we will wake up. So every time that you wake up in a way, you must go and share that wisdom. You must go and knock on doors. You must go and wake up people. You must go and talk to your friends, send inspiring message to everyone. You woke up while watching a certain video, a class. You must share that video. You must like that video. You must wake up all the notifications of all of your friends, all of your beloved ones, because that's the power of, that your awareness, your awakeness will affect other people. That that wave that you felt inside of you will hit another part of water, another wave will hit the, the next, and the water will spread and will wash the world with the light of emunah, light of faith. Now it's true the faith is in the night. Now it's true it's very hard to wake up ourselves. But you don't know. After you wake up one person, suddenly that person comes in the next morning when it's harder for you and he knocks on your door. When we're helping each other, when we're supporting each other, in that moment we're making that movement to move ourselves. We're helping ourselves. When you're doing something good for another person, that good thing, that good deed that you just made will come back to you. 
You put your bread, your charity on the waves of the water and with the days it will come back to you. This is the way the Creator works. You plant and then you see and then, and then you harvest. You don't know in which way it will come back to you. It can come back through the bank, it can come back through a phone call, it can come back while finding your soulmate, buying a house, just being inspired, understanding deep things in life. You don't know how it can come back to you, but it will find its way back. And this is how we are finding our way back. Because our ancestors, they worked so hard in the beginning. In the first generations, and they moved their branches so hard that our branches are still moving and shaking until today. Even that we are standing in such far distance, even that we feel such separation, that we cannot recognize each other. Even those ones that we already seen once or twice in all, we can't, we're not sure who we are, we can't be sure who they are. We don't remember and we're disconnected and so confused and so broken. But still there is such strong and powerful engine in our hearts that never stops. That never stops no matter what you do. You wake up with regret and you wake up with passion to do more and you want to achieve and to accomplish and to grow and to succeed and to pray and to do chuba and to fly and to come back and to go to the mikveh. Like what's going on? It's like a different person. One night he's going to the clubs and he's dancing and drinking. Next morning an angel putting filin and reading Torah. What's going on? Are you sick in your mind? Yes, yes, yes. Sorry to let you down. Yes. Yes. So, if you realize that you're the sickest one of them all, you need to find the biggest doctor of them all. Someone that can heal you. Who can heal you? Only a lunatic can heal you. Only a crazy person can deal with you. You know that. No one can deal with you. You know yourself. No one can hold you back. No one can stop you. In our generation, no one can stop us. Are you afraid of something? You're afraid of your thoughts. You're afraid of yourself. You're afraid of people. You can fight with 20 people without thinking about it. Like you're crazy. You know you're crazy. You go, you throw yourself like, my wife asked me, are we crazy or what? Like what are you, uh, what, what are we doing? How are we spending our lives? People don't need to live like that. And I tell her, you're right. But I don't know, like I don't have another way. There is no another option. There is no another way. Traveling with all of our kids, all the family, packed all of our house, shoved it into, the, into 20 suitcases, moving to the States. What are you doing? You have five children. People are running away from the States to Israel like I don't know what, like the only rafts in, 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 in the world. And we against the stream, must go against the stream, must. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm not sure you understand what I'm talking about, but it's okay. We had everything in Jerusalem. When we lived in Jerusalem, I lived in Jerusalem for 39 years of my life. We had everything we needed, everything we had. We had a house, we had money, kids were learning, we had school, we had everything we needed except of one. Our brothers and sisters were not there. That was our problem. That was our only concern. That was our only problem over there. And I couldn't let myself go and drown into my deep sleep while learning Talmud, learning Gemara. I couldn't let myself go and focus only on that. Everything was perfect. I was able to go every day. And for years that was the thing that I was doing. I was going to yeshiva and every day from 9 a.m. in the morning until 3 or 5 p.m. I would sit and learn every day, every day. I can swear to you if you don't believe me, I, you can ask my friends. Every day seven pages of Gemara, like crazy, like a machine. I would read and read and read and read and read and read. 
And I would learn Shulchan Aruch and Likutei Moharan and other books. Every day, Mishnayot, I would finish 18, 18, not like, not Pirke Mishnayot, 18 Masechtot of Mishnayot a day. 18 Masechtot every day. I would just read and read and read and read. Like it's, it's, it's a half of a bookcase every day. And at night I would come after a crazy day, uh, all day. And I would sit on the sofa in the living room and I would sit and learn and I can like, I'm, I'm being honest with you. My wife, she will tell you, I'm not making up. Until 4 a.m. in the morning, I would fall asleep and wake up again and open another book because I had my books at home. And I wouldn't cross one day without reading in every one of those books. I had the Zohar Kadosh over there, and stories from Tzadikim, and Tehilim, and Shnai Mikra Vechat Targum, and learning from Nach, because you must learn about the prophets and everything, and more and more and more. And every day I would put another book in that, in that box that I had. I had those years, but I felt like I'm, I'm sinning. I felt like I'm doing something wrong because people needed my help and I was not available for them to give myself to them and to help them. And when I start realizing that, I realized that even to my own family I was blind. Even to my wife I was not aware, I was not listening to her. Even to my children. And when that hit me, I just like, so what's going on? Is it all a mistake? It cannot be. What, Judaism is wrong? No, no, no way. So what's going on? Something is missing. Missing. If you're doing your job while you're asleep, even if you're the president, you're wrong. Something is wrong. And you can be the president. You can be the chief rabbi of that yeshiva. You can be, I don't know who. You can be the, 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 the co-founder of the Muna project. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're asleep, so you're asleep. If you're not aware and you're disconnected from people with needs, people that are knocking at your door, people that cares, people that loves, people that needs guidance, and you're able to tell them, no, I'm sorry, I'm learning now, you're sick in your mind. And you don't need to reject them in force. The fact that you are sitting and your mind is in front of the books for six and seven hours every day makes you not available for those people that are crossing the street in those six or eight hours. So in a generation that no one needs you, no problem that you will sit and learn. If really no one needs you, perfect, go sit and learn, fantastic. But if you have a certain talent, if you have a certain ability, if you see that people are coming to you and asking for advice, if you see that people are coming to your life and knocking on your door and screaming for help, you must make yourself available for those people, for those souls. And no matter what you had in mind one hour before, to be a millionaire, to find a wife, to buy that house, to, to, I don't know, to become an angel, to learn Kabbalah, it's all nonsense. It's all nonsense. If your wife, she needs you, and you're full of passion to go to Rabbi Nachman of Breslev in Uman, you're crazy. You are sick in your mind. You are telling yourself that your wife, she is the obstacles of your path to Hashem to reach Rabbeinu. You need to be with Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. Yes, the holy, the holy couple. You and Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. You need to meet over there in Uman because Rabbeinu told you that you're his student and you must go to Uman. Great. And that obstacle is blocking your way. So move that obstacle and go and marry Rabenu. Why you put a ring on her finger? If Rabenu is what that you're working for, if Rabenu is the most important thing in your life, go to the Rabbi. Why you need to make your wife suffer? Why she needs to suffer without you? Now, if you got married with some angel that she is also super happy, powerful, glowing and glooming and blooming when you're flying, so great, fantastic, go fly on the wings of, me, of, of eagles. No problem, no one is holding you back. But it cannot be that in your mind, your wife, your soulmate, your soul, that you must be aware to her feelings or else 
you're not aware to your soul. You're disconnected from your spirituality. You live in an imaginary world. It cannot be that that soul of yours will become a blocking stone, a rolling stone in your path that makes your life hard. And if she became that, so something is wrong with you. Because if your wife, she is sad, it doesn't mean that something is wrong with her. Why she is sad? Let's ask, why she is so sad always? Why she is so upset always? There is only one answer. Who is commanded to make her happy if not her husband? Now, if the husband is commanded to make his wife happy, how can you blame the wife for not being happy? The Creator obligated the husband to make his wife happy. Now, the wife is in deep depression. She's got a mental problem. She is a downer. She's always sad. Horrible situation. Does it change? the purpose of your life or the Creator's commanded on you, the responsibility that He hooked to you, that He put on top of your head? No. You're just stuck with a purpose and a bigger mission that the Creator Himself was innocent enough to think that you will have the ability and the power to complete and to achieve. But you choose to blame her, and to blame him, and to blame her parents, and to blame your parents, and to blame your rabbi, and to blame whoever. And not to deal with the responsibility that Hashem put on your shoulders. He told you that you need to do A, and also He told you that you need to do B. Okay, now what do you do? Break your mind. You need to come to the solution. But you cannot make a person to be your obstacle. You cannot define your soulmate, your wife, as a burden, as a problem in your life. Or else you are separating yourself from the real purpose of life, that it's to be a human being. That it's to be a, a, a feeling creation. A sensitive human being that is able to understand and to feel and to care about the needs of his beloved ones. Of those ones that are close to him. There was one person that sat on the table of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev in the night of Rosh Hashanah and suddenly Rabbi Nachman of Breslev himself in the middle of the holy day of Rosh Hashanah sensed Rabbi Nachman of Breslev realized that that person is sitting here and his wife is crying at home. And Rabbi Nachman of Breslev stood up from the table, went to his room and locked the door. And no one could realize what happens here. And people, the students went and asked and they were waiting and they knocked on his door and he refused to come out. And after a long time of asking and begging from the Rabbi to come back to the table, what happened? Middle of the evening of the Seudah, the middle of the night of, of Rosh Hashanah. The Rabbi, the Rabbi that said, Rosh Hashanah Sheli, my Rosh Hashanah, is the most important thing. He went to his room and locked the door and refused to come back. And then he said, There is a person that is sitting on my table, eating with me on my table, and his wife, she's crying at home. How dare he leaves his wife crying at home and coming to me to Rosh Hashanah. And they told him, listen, Rabbi, he cannot go and make peace with her. It's Rosh Hashanah, it's a Chag, it's a holy day, he cannot drive. He lives very far from here, he cannot walk. What do you want him to do? He said, only if he will accept on himself that immediately when the holiday will finish, he will run back home to please his wife and to apologize and to make peace with her, I'll come out from the room. And only when that person cried and did shuva, Rabbi Nachman came out of the room. Now you will say that your wife is holding you back. She doesn't understand who Rabbeinu was. Right, and you understand. You're a joke. You are a joke. You are a walking joke. You're a walking clown. You're a joke. You think you understand Rabbi Nachman of Breslev? Are you crazy? Do you think that for Rabbi Nachman in Breslev, there's going to be something, one thing, 
that will be higher than peace, than shalom, one thing that will be higher for this person, this righteous man, than peace in your house, that he will care about one thing more than the peace that you will have with your family. So you don't have no connection with holiness, with purity, with the will of Hashem, with the will of the righteous one. You are 100% disconnected and live in your own wild illusion with no connection to the truth. If you think that to the righteous people there is something, one thing more important than the peace and happiness of their students. Joke. You are a joke if that's what you think. You are disconnected and separated from your Rebbe, that you called him your Rebbe. I'm telling you, he is not your Rebbe. If that's how you think, that he doesn't care about your wife, <laughs> you're talking Lashon Hara on your Rebbe. You're disconnected. Lo matza kadosh baruch hu kli machzik bracha ela hashalom. The Creator couldn't find a vessel to contain the blessing except of peace. That's it. Elijah the prophet said to his students, I'm not asking from you anything else except of that you will respect each other. Nothing else except of that. Just respect each other. Now if you're going to create that plot and Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, you're going to make stories and you're going to take all the evidence that you can just gather around from different crazy sick people that are making up stories to make that fantasia, that illusion to be so-called truth, to supply for themselves another week in, 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 in whatever. Another holy day in the, in the mountains, another week without their families. Now I'm not saying not to go. Don't misinterpret me, and if you want to misinterpret me, so go and be crazy. I bought a house in Ukraine in Uman to spend my Rosh Hashanah in Uman. I've been to Uman more than 25 times in my life. I took all my five boys before they were three to Uman, not before they were seven. To come and tell me that I don't care about Uman and Rabenu, you don't know what you're talking about. The only reason why I'm standing here is because of Rabbi Nachman. It's his fault that you're stuck here with me now. He is my Rebbe and I'm a Breslev Hasid. And if you don't want to understand what I'm talking to you and you still want to go and act crazy, so go and act crazy. That craziness won't build your house. You want to build your house? Be human. Work on your attributes. Be nice. And then you'll find a way how to make it to Uman. And you'll find a way how to be close to your Rebbe. And you'll understand what the Rebbe was talking about. And Midata Shalom, you will suddenly, finally understand what peace is all about. How can you have peace when you, like, you don't feel your wife? I'm not saying not to go. Go if it's coming out of happy house and you have your ticket and you have the way to go. Go! But don't say that your wife, she is a burden. Don't say that your wife, she is a problem. Because then you're just a crazy lunatic with, with no connection to the truth. Because that wife is your soul. And you're just disconnected from your soul. And if you have negative and foreign and bad thoughts about your wife, so I don't know what lives inside of you that you hate yourself so much. Because she is your soul. And if you don't get it yet, it's because that you're blind. And you don't recognize your soul, your soul, your soul. Because the man and his wife are one soul, one unit, it's one soul. And if you're disconnected from your own soul, so it's time to work on that. I'm not going to apologize on my shoe in front of you. That's the truth. And words of truth can be recognized by those ones that are willing to hear the truth. And if you recognize it, so you are brave people. And the light of Hashem will bless you in your hearts. 
And if you decide to fight against it and not to accept it, Hashem Yazo. Hashem will help. Okay, what else you wanted to talk about? Questions? Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, when he said that it's the most important thing to come to him to Rosh Hashanah, it was a fantastic thing that he said, but he also said that you cannot come to him if you don't have peace in your house. It's like that you need in the morning to pray Shacharit, but if you have some kind of crisis, some kind of problem, the Shulchan Aruch itself is telling you that there are ways that you should deal with your life if you cannot pray Shacharit. There are ways. There are different ways to fix what that, that's been spoiled, that's been twisted. So now if you're holding in a certain position that doesn't allow you to make that journey, so stop blaming and reconnect yourself to the Rabbi. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said, if you will pray and with love, you will hold and connect yourself to me with love. You can pull me back in. I will pray with you. You think it happens only in Uman? And if you do, it's only because you never experienced love to each other. It can happen to you alone in your house. Rav Alter David Chaim Stern, the righteous man from, from Bnei Brak, told me personally, he told me I was sitting in my sukkah in the holiday of Sukkot and suddenly the schach, the branches that on top of the sukkah moved to the side and Rabbi Nachman of Breslev went down into my sukkah and spoke with me. Now you're going to say, oh, that's Rav Alter David Chaim Shter. I'm going to tell you, you don't appreciate yourself enough. I know more people that can see souls. Not only Rav Alter David Chaim Shter. There are many people in this world that saw Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. I have a student, his name is Raphael. He is a girl, he's a convert. He saw Rabbi Nachman of Breslev a few times in his life. I know it. Rabbi Nachman is knocking at his door and coming to his, to, his, to his life, into his dreams and talking to him and running conversations with him. And when he converted, he changed his name to Raphael Nachman. And you're going to tell me that he didn't saw Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. Whatever, you can say. But I know the truth. I saw a few righteous people and I also saw a few hidden righteous people in my life. If Rabbi Nachman wants to come to your house, to knock on your door, to sit in your brain, he can do that. You're talking about an angel. You're talking about a soul. You're not talking about a body. You're talking about the soul of that holy man, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. He can pray with you. Maybe Rabbi Nachman is sitting with us here in Shul right now. If you want to achieve those high levels, you must find the real you. You must find who you are. You must recognize the light of your own soul. As long as you're disconnected from who you are, you're disconnected from your true potential, you cannot achieve almost anything that is all and it's all served in front of you on silver plate. Just connect yourself to your true being. Be truthful. Be a person of truth. Don't let your lusts and your fears and your pressure lead you to act like an animal. No, I must. No, I have to. No, I need to. I can't do differently. Don't be an animal. Don't be an animal. Be a human being. Righteous people, they control their inclination. They don't let their inclination control them. They're leading their themselves. They're choosing their path. They're not being led and pulled by lusts and temptations and desires. They're choosing if to do or not to do, if to make or not to make, if to talk or not to talk. They're not being led by their desires. The way to do it is by working on yourselves, on your awareness, reconnecting yourself to your true selves. 
by having a deep and serious conversation with yourself on daily basis, talking to yourself to find your true self and not to ignore your feelings and to listen to your senses and to your soul that is talking to you from within, to your heart, to your mind that is speaking to you. You, you can't hear yourself, you can't hear your thoughts, you can't feel your feelings. You can. So if you can, so listen. And follow that inner understanding of yours and walk with it all the way with no end and then you'll become like that Nachshon Ben Amin Adam that can jump into the water with no fear. Okay? And pray for me. I want to join you. Thank you. Shana Tova. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.